And today's Sierra snowpack measurement giving us a clearer picture of just how much last month's storms have helped our snowpack. Well, good evening. I'm Elizabeth Cook. And I'm Ryan Yamamoto. The second measurement of this year's at Phillips Station found a snow depth of 85.5 inches with a water contact of 33.5 inches. That's 193% of average for this time of year and 137% of where we typically are on April 1st when the snowpack tends to peak. All right, that's a lot of numbers, and they sound really good, but what do they really mean in terms of our drought? Well, joining us live to lend some insight is Andrew Shorts with the Central Sierra Snow Lab. Now, Andrew, before we get to our questions, I just want to look behind you because it looks like the window is actually boarded up because it got smashed. Can you tell us a little bit about that? <laughs> it's, it's actually boarded up to prevent it from getting smashed. Okay. Uh, so these are our second floor windows, and we've had so much snow so far this season um, that it was starting to pile up next to them, and we have to put boards on them to make sure that the snow doesn't actually smash them. I, I mean, I guess that's good news, even though I guess it's sort of a good problem to have. We're off to a great start, at least it sounds like you are, but how much of an impact are we actually looking at in terms of busting our drought? Is it really going to make a huge dent? You know, at, at this point, it's looking like it will make some impact. To what extent, uh, we won't really know until March or April. Um, you know, there's a couple different things that can happen between now and then. Of course, we can get more snow, which will help us out more. We can also have things like rain on snow events that could potentially wash some of it away, which would be detrimental. So the next two months are really going to be critical in determining what impact we see from all this wonderful snowpack and rain. Yeah, I mean, what happens when the snow potentially starts melting too quickly, gets too warm? What are the impacts of that? Well, when that happens, we can see flooding. And of course, uh, that means that we're going to release a lot more water from our dams and infrastructure to account for that flooding. So we really don't want the snowpack to melt early. We want it to melt later in the spring and summer. So although it's at this point somewhat of an unlikelihood that that will happen, we, we just really want those cool temperatures to set in and for the storm window to stay open so that we can keep getting snow and really make a significant debt in this drought. Yeah, we sound a little bit like Goldilocks. We don't want it to be too hot. We don't want it to be too cold. We want enough snow, but not too much. If you had a magic wand, what would the ideal weather pattern be in the coming months to really maximize water storage and then minimize flood risks also? Well, I, I think that's pretty much exactly uh, exactly it. You know, cool temperatures, that Goldilocks, right? Cool temperatures, more moisture coming in, um, and trying to really avoid anything that would melt away our snowpack early. That way, it comes into our reservoirs and goes into our inflows at times that we want it to and can bulk up rather than having to prepare for potential flooding. So we really want those cool temperatures and just plenty more storms to roll through. All right, here's hoping we get all of that. Andrew Shorts with the Central Sierra Snow Lab. Thanks so much.